Scattered across the world, there are expansive chambers where supercars lay sleeping under their robes, waiting for the first signs of spring. All the while dreaming of hairpins, clean tarmac, and an empty road. Corvettes, Porsches, McLarens. But no, today we're waking one up to film it, and it's this old pile of rust. Well, I think it's cool. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is the best car ever made. Is it? Okay, not gonna lie, that did hurt, but I've ribbed James for his Miata enough, so I guess it's fair. And yes, this is mine. My own. My, uh, precious. And I've wanted one of these for as long as I've been into cars, but as is the case with most E46 M3s these days, I am the current owner in a long line of owners, including in this case the dudes over at Speed Academy, who took what was a busted, rusted old M3 and turned it into a drift car, and they cut me a wicked deal at 12 grand Canadian. But the best part is that they did all of the things that these cars need doing including rod bearings, subframe reinforcement, and a full suspension overhaul. Which means since I got it, and since these cars are just so reliable, it worked perfectly and absolutely nothing has gone wrong. Thomas, that's not entirely true, is it? What? Yes? How many things have actually broken? <sighs> Fine. So, uh, the crankcase pressure regulator valve went, which caused the dipstick to pop up and blow oil all over the engine, the soft top stopped working, the radio died, I had to do rush repair, and the washer bottle leaked, and finally the clutch failed. But the legends over at Burning Rubber Tire and Speed and Boost Theory came to my rescue and installed a new clutch for me. Yeah, so on the plus side, the issues are fixed, for now. So I repaired the rust and got limitless wraps to cover up the faded yellow. Then I had Guardian Designs make me a custom steering wheel, and Eventuri hooked me up with an intake. So even though I think I want to wrap the carbon fiber hood that Speed Academy installed, and yes, I know that the convertible adds weight and those hood badges need to go, for now, this is perfect and it's right where I want it. And what follows is why I think this is one of the best cars ever made. But let's see if I can convince James of that. And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, <laughs> track tests, no! and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe, hit the bell. E46 M3 And it's mine And you're probably wondering why I'm wearing these gloves Well, it's because I've got an Alcantara steering wheel and I want it to last I made James wear them too <laughs> These are awful Alright, let's do this Yes! Oh, 8,000 RPM. Ugh. Stupid Miatas. 7,500. We got the top down today so I can hear the engine. Actually, the reason is is the car makes lots of squeaks and cracks with the top up, and I don't want James to know. All right, this is one of the most legendary BMWs of all time. And it is my favorite BMW because I think it is the best all-around package that BMW has ever created. It has everything that you need in terms of comfort and style and class. And then it has an 8,000 RPM, 333 horsepower, naturally aspirated inline six called the S54. Now Thomas is very proud of this car, he's very giddy about it, and if I say nothing bad about it, that's because he's edited out all those comments. <laughs> oh, stiff clutch, nice short shifter, and revving out to 8000 RPM is not something I take for granted. Oh, that's wonderful. There is a lot happening though, the, uh, the windscreen seems to be moving. As to the doors, the windows, the seats, the roll bar, and then the wind rushing, it feels like I'm inside of a hurricane, which is both good and bad. The sound from the exhaust is unbelievable. It fills the cabin so nicely. And it's just a pleasure to row through these gears. This is the same era and price as an R34 GTR back when they came out. Obviously, the R34 has gained a little bit more value, but it's just interesting to put the two side by side. JDM's best versus BMW's best. 
But interestingly, this makes about the same horsepower as that GTR, but with no turbochargers. But the best thing about this engine, and the reason I love it so much, is because it has independent throttle bodies. That means that the throttle response is insane. Up near around 4,000 RPM, foot down, it's immediate and incredibly smooth. And of course, it makes a wicked noise. I've installed an aftermarket Eventura intake, which just pumps up the induction noise even more. And that's what this car is all about, induction noise. Now, I just got out of an X6, which is, I think, the newest BMW you can buy. So it's interesting to drive one from this long ago. There's a rawness to everything that there isn't in new BMWs. And that's a double-edged sword. You're a part of the experience in every single way. And at 50 kilometers an hour, it feels like you're going 100. Granted, it's probably as safe at 50 kilometers an hour as a new one is at 100. That's not the point. All right, you've probably noticed that this BMW M3 is quite modified. It's lowered on Fortune Auto coilovers, which honestly I find to be a little bit bouncy. Don't really like the damping, but they're soft. It also has a Borla exhaust, which I do like, because it barely drones and it sounds amazing. Now, obviously a perfect weight distribution and it's rear wheel drive. This particular M3 has been set up for drift. That means the alignment specs are very aggressive to rotate. So the tail goes really, really easily, which makes it very fun. And since this has a clutch-based LSD, it kind of locks up aggressively. So the rear, it, it goes. When it goes, it goes. If you want to get cheeky, you can. It does snap a bit more than a Miata though. You get yourself in trouble. It's Thomas's car. I'm not going to do anything too crazy. And I don't think he would either. <laughs> Woo! And that is why you buy an M3. The good thing about these old M3s is that as long as you take care of them and you address the many issues that these cars have, they last quite a long time. This one is five kilometers away from 300,000 kilometers. And it's tight as a drum. The steering with this setup is incredibly sharp. It's more numb than I thought it was going to be given that we accused new BMWs of being that. You know, it's not as refined as other cars and it's showing its age a bit. But for 10 grand, like, the only new cars that achieve this level of franticness, fran franticity, fran franticitis? Anyway, the only new ones are the Type R and the Veloster N. You know, this is just for the money. I don't think you could have more fun. This is a dream car for me, and I am so happy that I finally got one. I've wanted one for years. It, this is it. This is everything I've wanted. It's perfect. I love it. All right, we're going to go back to Car Crib so we can talk about the styling. Well, okay. That's pretty good. Right? Yeah. I see it. I see it. Let's talk about the styling and my blue wrap. Your blue wrap? Yes. Okay, so I'm a huge fan of blue wraps and you've copied me. You have a Miata that is wrapped metallic blue. This is a manly blue, sort of. Yeah, said no one ever. <laughs> it does look really good. This is actually the same, if you follow the channel, this is the same blue as the Camaro SS1 LE that we tracked. Yeah, this was done by Limitless Wraps. They absolutely crushed it because it looks fantastic. Like, yeah, it looks very, very good. However, and Thomas has learned this the hard way. With a wrap, you want to start with a car that's a base color that's like monochrome, you know, black, oh, white, yeah. gray. As a result, there's quite a few places in here, like the door jams, yes. which look yellow, and in this, the know. engine bay. So it used to be Phoenix yellow. Yeah. But sandwiched in between the baby poop yellow is an S54. And that's one of the prettiest engines ever made. Is it? It is, it's beautiful, look at it. It looks very good, this is pretty as well, what's this? This is my Eventuri intake that you heard in the car. It makes, adds a lot of cool induction noise. It's made out of carbon fiber, and it adds a couple horsepower. Also, I have this little carbon fiber lip down here which uses the brake duct to shoot cold air up into the car. How cool is that? That helps the air conditioning? <laughs> yes, it helps the air conditioning. <laughs> uh, yeah, but obviously the E46 is timeless. And its lines are incredible. You didn't go for the coupe though, which is no, maybe prettier? It is prettier, but I went, 
I know. I went with the convertible for two reasons. One, I used to have a Miata and I like the open air. And two, Speed Academy actually installed a roll bar. So it's stiffer, so you don't get as much cowl shake. All right. Even though there is still some cowl no, shake. No, I think, I think you know, this earns the wheels also, these Koenig wheels. Oh, they're so cool. You weren't sure on them at the beginning. No, but now that I see them with the car and like the black hood and the blue wrap, they look fantastic. I think they look great. The wrap, unfortunately, does highlight some of the factors that make this an old car, like this huge Tesla level panel gap. Uh, would that, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. But <laughs> the car is an icon. I think it's really timeless. You see it on the road now, it still looks amazing. Yep. I'm wondering if the interior still feels as timeless. Let's go check it out. Yeah, see these doors, they creak a little they bit. They feel their age, yeah. Okay, so BMWs from this era had issues with plastics. One of them is creakiness, like this. The oh, other yeah. is this down here, where they put this like, kind of, they, stop it! Like a they put, film. They put this like a film of plastic over everything and it just peels off, it's horrible. Oh, no. Thankfully, from here up, everything's great. <laughs> <laughs> right. It looks fine. I like the like last Lieutenant black Dan. Like Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. All right. Gauge cluster. I'm going to start here because this is one of the coolest things about the M from this era, because it has a a, a series of colored blocks on the uh, tack to show you how high you can rev it as the car warms up. Right. So you shouldn't rev it past those. And actually, if you know these engines, you should be even a little bit more conservative and wait till your oil temps get up before you start really revving it out. So That's there are right. ways to drive this. You, you know, accounting for its age. Yes, and right. you should, honestly, because they have rod bearing issues and those sorts of things. Thankfully, the uh, Speed Academy, they actually did the rod bearing, so I, that's taken care of. I don't have to worry about it. It's not, I mean, it's comfortable, and you've still got the Harman Kardon. It's actually not a bad sound system, you know? No, like, well, that's, they still use Harman Kardon. They do, yeah. Yeah, but this, obviously the, the showpiece here is that steering wheel. Yes, so uh, this is made by Guardian Design, same company that did your Miata steering wheel. Yeah, they right? did a great job. This is fantastic. I love this thing, right? It's totally custom. So, like, I optioned it exactly how I wanted it. I wanted the, the Alcantara on the lower half. I wanted the M color stitching. I wanted the little noon marker in red. It's one of the coolest things. It makes the car feel special automatically when you get in. It does, but it also ages everything else. Like the shiny yeah. plastics and the shiny leathers. I knew this was coming. I feel like I'm in a Friends episode. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about my, uh, my, my gauges here, though? It's pretty cool, right? Yeah. It's important information so you don't blow up an S54. Those aren't stock. They're definitely not stock, no. But I assume everything in here works, right? Like, I'm not going to do a window. That no, works. windows work, yep. That... Yeah, that doesn't work. I don't know why. So the hazard lights and the central locking? Correct. Seats, comfortable, right? Yeah, yeah. and they're heated? They are heated, yep, cool. yep. And there are back seats, which you can't use now because there's a roll bar welded to the chassis. Not bad, right? This is pretty cool. I love it. It's okay. It's cool. I, I, I don't it. think the interior is the best part of this car. I love it. I, lo I love this era. It's not E46 bad. E46 is my favorite gen. This is totally... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I just go out and get some coffees. <laughs> Hey, that just means you can customize it. That's what, <laughs> that's that's right. what that means. Yeah, exactly. So uh, forget the piece that came off here. Yeah, uh, that's, that's actually a little bit of wiring because I had to fix something in here. Just one thing? Many things. <laughs> um, can we uh, do a conclusion? Sure. So yes, these M3s have their issues, but like many German cars, as long as you stay on top of it, they last for a very long time. And that's a good thing. Because cars like this, compact, rear-wheel drive, naturally aspirated sports coupes, don't really exist anymore. There is a level of rawness combined with civility here that we probably will never see again. And those of you that have been watching this channel for a long time will know that I've been building and driving E46 BMWs for years, and this is the best one of them all. So you could say, I'm a happy guy. Yes, the Euro CSL M3 is superior and legendary, but for the price, I'm not sure that there's a better buy out there. Assuming that you don't mind a little bit of wrenching. If you do happen to see Thomas's car in and around Toronto, make sure you uh, flip in the bird. <laughs> yeah, anyway. But you probably won't see it because I'm going to be storing it here at Car Crib. It's actually a pretty cool place. It comes with a cover, it's temperature controlled, and there's a place to plug in a trickle charger. There we go. So it still won't start in the new year anyway. <laughs>